Dwayne. Hello, Dwayne. Hey, hey, uh, Champ, how are you doing? Life is good. Yeah. You know, they I was even, wondering to even feed you around here. <laughs> well, you're looking sharp. Thank you. I like that jacket. Yeah, that's enough to keep me lit up too. <laughs> I feel bright with this jacket. Yeah, it looks good. I was thinking today, because uh, you know, I'm sure everybody calls you Champ. Uh, but what what's the difference when somebody calls you Pastor and somebody calls you Champ? What how do, which would you rather be called? I always tell them, just don't call me too late for dinner. Every <laughs> name you call me, I love it. And uh, yeah. the, one, the, the most excellent thing about being a minister all these years, I've been all those things to people. George, champ, pastor, I like it all. And you can just call me anything you want. I'm, I'm not into that Mr. Foreman stuff, though. <laughs> well, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. And I was there uh, this summer when we had dinner together. Uh, we had a picture uh, made and we, you know, had that wonderful meal uh, there in New Orleans. And uh, just such a joy to meet you and to be able to talk to you now. I would be there, but I'm on a trip with my family. So I'm glad you're able to squeeze me in here. I'm one stuff family. Yeah. And you're um, the movie, you know, we read the script to saw your story. So much of it that people don't know. I think it's it's depends on what time of their life and their age of where they know you from, you know? Uh, and so uh, I love the fact that uh, how transformed your life was, you know, like I've always known you from my age as a kind person, you know, joyful and stuff. And so when we get into the early days of your story, you know, we see someone who's who's pretty hardened and and uh, who have been hurt and all that. Um, so you want to talk a little bit about the change in your life? You have this point. You know, how did you get from point A, angry and hardened to this joyful person who really, you know, you seem like you want to spread joy. You want to make people feel good. And uh, so you want to talk about that for a minute? Yeah, disappointment, discourage is all I had as a young boy. My mother would encourage me a little bit, but I turned out to be a bad boy running from cops and police, disappointing, not the, disappointed, not knowing where my life would take me. Then I got a second chance to go join the Job Corps, a government program, and I, they emphasized reading and doing something with your life, becoming an Olympic gold medalist. Be even becoming heavyweight champ of the world, thinking I had it made, and then get into that position and kept thinking there's got to be more to it than that because you're up today, down to tomorrow, like a roller coaster. That'll drive you crazy. Trying to find out what a true champion would be until I found religion. I found myself in the hand of God, and I've been contented ever since. I'm a happy man now. So I have ups and downs. I even go to the hospital a few times. But I come out of there not just with a prescription, but I come out of there with really a feeling that life is great because of my faith in God. Yes. Amen. And I, I think it's, uh, I love that more people are going to see your story because uh, they're going to see, they may be at point A and wondering how they get to point B. And I love that they're going to see that through, uh, you know, what happened in your life and how things were able to turn around for you. Yeah, no doubt about it. All of a sudden, all of the good things happened to me, I credit it to God because a lot of times I didn't know where I was going, falling, falling, and falling. Then there was someone right there with their hands to hold me up so I wouldn't go too far. And every human being out there has got that chance to find God and understand that hope is in God and find your faith in God, you can always do it again. There's no, there's no thing as the end. It's always a new beginning when you find God. And that's what I hope that movie reflects, a new beginning. Yes. Uh, several of my friends who uh, have seen previews, they love just the one little line, the one little moment in the 
in the movie about, oh yeah, that uh, that grill, you know, that I send, signed my name to, it's it's doing pretty good, you know, because I think there's a whole generation that know you really from that, you know. Yeah, and I'd run up on people, even little kids who said, when they were trying to convince the teachers, were trying to convince them I was champ of the world. Speak to them, George, and uh, about you being a championship, and the kids were looking <laughs> Look at little kids saying, that's the cooking man. People <laughs> more about the cooking and the George Foreman grill than they did about my boxing. But I didn't yes. mind I wasn't intimidated by it. I love it. Well, you whatever gives you a platform to be able to speak to people and people pay attention to you, I think I think it's just a beautiful thing. Because you like I said, your personality is something that people uh it needs to infect more people. It needs to make, you know your joy needs to be spread even more. So whatever, whatever way that is, it needs to happen. True. And so your TV, your TV show a few years ago, my wife and I watched it uh, pretty religiously. The one where you traveled around with uh, the other guys. Yeah. And uh, that was a lot of fun. (laughs) I had so much fun. William Shatner, Terry Bradshaw, uh, the Fonz himself. We had so yeah. much fun. We bonded, not knowing each other that well, but we bonded traveling all over the country. And it was exciting for me to travel like that. First, I traveled being a champ of the world. I couldn't eat what I wanted. I was always disciplined. But this time, I ate good foods all around the world. And I was happy yeah. because of that. Yeah, I think I saw one where, didn't you sleep in like a little, uh, in one of those Japanese hotels where you had to sleep in the little yeah, uh, was, little bunks or whatever. It was like a, a, a what do you call it? A, a, a barrel or something. Yeah. And can you imagine yeah. people sleep like that? It makes you realize all of the things you have are not necessary anyway. And now, right. after a moment, you get comfortable. We all really don't need that much. I learned well, that that's right. That better late than never. Well, better I found that uh, late than never. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of the finished movie when you saw it? You know, we were there watching the final fight. Uh, I think the the guy who plays you does a had did a great job, Forrest Whitaker. What what did you think? What were your emotions and your thoughts as you watched it? I was happy too because when and thinking about doing a movie all those years, you hoped that it would be a real actor, not 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 just some celebrity playing your life. This guy, Chris Davis an actor. He even transformed himself. A few times he walked up on the movie and I forgot it wasn't me because of the, the things he was saying and the way he was behaving himself. I got a lot out of that. I cried a couple of tears here and there in the movie. But the guy, Chris Davis, should be applauded for doing a good job. He was the young George Foreman and the come comeback kid. And of course, uh, uh, Forrest Whitaker, he did a good job, Doc Brodus, the the guy who truly inspired me. It was his dream to be a boxer more than my dream. Mm-hmm. What was it like pastoring a congregation for as long as you did? I mean, that's a that's a whole different realm uh, for somebody who's, you know, all of the career that you had. That's got to be something very unique. What did it? How how was? your community with your connection with your congregation and how they treated you and all that. How did that go? And I learned the big lesson is that God helped me and God could help anyone. And I'd have to do these sermons week after week, expressing to people what a great, uh, the greatness of God. And that I made a vow that I would never take any of my problems to the pulpit. No one would have, hear anything about my problems. It'll be about God solving all of our problems. Oh, that's good. And that's, that's good. I, that's a chore. Leave your problems at home. <laughs> and a lot of times I just wiping my eyes from tears of things that have gone wrong for me. And I want to tell everyone about them, but I never took my problems to church with me. Yeah. Um, I noticed I follow uh Mr. T on Twitter. And a few months ago, I think he preached his first sermon or maybe what. Anyway, he, he got up and preached. I watched some of it on YouTube and just wrote and encouraged him and said, you know, I thought it was great because I know it's 
for him, it's something different too. You know, it's not in his comfort zone necessarily. <laughs> yeah. And you're a big uh, family guy uh, and you have, uh, you know, beautiful family. We saw some of them there that night at dinner and I know they adore you. You adore them. You want to talk a little bit about what it's been like to, to see, you know, uh, how your family's grown and, and your legacy as it is through the lives of your children and your grandchildren. And that's really a tough one too, because you raise all these children and your grandkids and you telling them what not to do. And you can't do this. Sit up straight, put a smile on your face and you guide them through life. And then all of a sudden one day they're telling you, George, sit up straight, get a smile <laughs> on your face, behave, be happy. Uh, and that's been a really a tremendous blessing for me to see my children grow up to encourage me. That's a one. Yes. And give me knowledge. Tell me what to say and what not to say. That's all you want out of life is children <laughs> encouraging you. Right. Yes. And that's good. That's good. Uh, I'm, I don't want to go over, but I did want to ask you a little bit about your friendship with Muhammad Ali, which I think was uh, a very unique, um, it's a unique part of the, uh, the movie. And it's, it's just really cool, you know, two of the the boxing legends and, and your relationship through the years. Well, I'd already already learned a lot and knew a lot about Muhammad Ali from his Cassius Clay day. He was fighting Floyd Patterson, and that's what got me interested in boxing. The kid looked at me and said, George, you're always picking on people. Why don't you become a boxer? Because of Cassius Clay in those times. Then Muhammad Ali, I met him, one of the most exciting people I've ever met in my life. And then we becoming great friends. I didn't like the idea that he beat me in, in Africa. He wanted to fight. I wish I had beat him to the punch. <laughs> but you know what? It, it, we, it all evolved, and we became the greatest of friends throughout his life. I even became good friends with his children. And what did I benefit with the uh, FaceTime video? We could actually talk and look at each other. Wonderful time. Wonderful friendship. Oh, that's good. Well, Pastor Champ, it's been a pleasure to talk to you today. I just have a lot of respect for you, and uh, I'm excited about how this movie is going to inspire people uh, who are looking for hope, looking for a way for their lives to be transformed. And I think you've uh, laid out a really good roadmap for that in this movie, and I just hope everybody uh, is impacted by it like we are. Thank you so much. God bless you. Have a great day. Thanks again.